If we are hypnotized by our emotions, how can we be dehypnotized? Thy ear shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Isaiah chapter 21. It is always so because there is the spirit which in itself is life. Life is unconditioned and arriving from its source carries with it the expression according to the plane in which it is manifested. When we are manifesting in the physical plane as human beings, Sons of men, daughters of men, these are really sons and daughters of God. The life carries with it through that means of expression, according to the highest possible expression of sons and daughters of God. And that is what we hear behind us say, this is the way we walk the end. And when you begin to realize this, there is always the inner voice that begins to help you to overcome your emotional stresses and strains, your angers, your envies, your jealousies, all these things that have a deep effect upon the emotions and the emotional body, which are pictures of the misbehavior which takes place in the cerebellum in the form of sometimes skin troubles, Eugenium ulcers, heart troubles, nervous reactions, skin troubles, and a host of other things which affect the body. We find that, that we are not free when we are caught up in our emotions. We are hypnotized. The idea now is to find how we can be dehypnotized de and so that we can be free of the the effects we ourselves create. We found in our last lesson that our emotions hypnotized us to the extent that our senses were impaired from 50 to 75 percent and more, sometimes 100 percent. The question is how can we be dehypnotized so that our senses will function 100 percent free from any inhibition? Leading doctors today are realizing the great part our thoughts and emotions play in all illnesses. The idea that some diseases are organic and others are functional is fast disappearing. There can be no dividing line between the mental and the physical. The chemical changes that take place through our thoughts and emotions have the effect of changing the tissue structure which in itself is a mental phenomenon. We have arrived at that stage in our understanding already that there is only one substance in the whole universe out of which everything must be created. The infinite being infinite in nature, there can only be one substance and that substance must be infinite. And there can be no other substance because of the fact that the infinite is infinite. Therefore, out of that substance, everything is created. And that substance must be mind. Because the infinite, cannot, you cannot say the infinite is physical. And you can't say that physical is physical substance or matter. Matter is a name you have acquired according to the opinion you have in regard to that which you feel and taste, see and touch. But when it's analyzed completely, you will find that this substance which you touch and feel changes into atoms. Beyond your sight, you see it no more. Yet those atoms are but brought as of energy of force. Energy. Now we know that energy separated from matter does not exist. That is to say, matter separated from energy does not exist. And energy separated from intelligence does not exist. Therefore, energy must have an intelligence to direct it because it is self-manifesting in a way according to a plan. And that intelligence is behind it. 
That's why we see that consciousness is the means of where, where all this substance is directed. The intelligence forms, then the ato- atoms, and the atoms form what we see as physical matter, and we have a body, a form. See clearly then that any change that takes place in the tissue structure must have a change in the fundamentals of the body. That is the atomic structure, and that causes a change in the physical structure through energy created by thought, emotion, movement, whatever the movement it may be. We have already learned that there is only one substance underlying all forms, <coughs> that life built the body, brain and nerves out of this substance of its, for its own self-expression. The unscientific attitude towards disease is fast disappearing. With this new knowledge forcing its way through the ignorant adhesion of past beliefs that matter is matter and disease can only be in matter. Disease has three aspects, mental, emotional, and physical. The physical sometimes only 10% of the trouble, while 90% is generally emotional and mental. Remove the mental and the emotional aspects, and your physical disappears. How often that is true. But the physical, naturally, the individual feels the physical reaction. And because the body is the instrument of sensation, the sensation is registered upon the body, and then you attribute this sensation to a physical pain, a physical disease, whatever the case may be, when all the time it may be 90% mental and emotional, and only 10% physical. If you will remember that, the conditions of your body sometimes will not worry you very much. Because when they do worry you, you create the vicious circle. And that vicious circle adds coal to the fire and produces that which you sell, you yourselves create in the first place. Reproduces it and intensifies it. Continuous adjustment <coughs> is the function of our nervous system. Through the functioning of the nervous system, the various activities within the body are adjusted. When we run fast, we breathe heavily and faster. The heart pounds, pumping the blood to the tissues where oxygen, with oxygen to supply the waste through exertion. There is an intelligence in the body which works through the cerebellum. It had plenty about the cerebellum, and it's not the last you're going to hear about it either. You're going to hear it a long way yet. (laughs) But as you see, (coughs) the cerebellum is the instrument, the nervous system, and that it makes those various adjustments. That is to say, when you run fast, you have to breathe faster, the heart has got to beat faster, the cerebellum has to do that work. The cerebellum, not only does that, but it carries with it all the memories of the past. (coughs) (coughs) The whole experience of the reproduction of the species uh, from that, that very small cell in the first place that could move, elongate itself, absorb its own food, and do everything within itself the anomaly. Then, that as that gradually grew out, it formed into other forms until such time as the whole of creation was built up as it is today with the highest form of that life which is manifesting in man and woman, carrying with it, mind you, the essential spiritual quality according to the state that is manifesting. Therefore, you are sons and daughters of God. Nevertheless, that through the whole of the ages, all the memory of that creation, all the memory of all those processes is in the heaven. All the sex qualities, all the things that you think are evil, are registered there as a natural process of evolution.
<coughs> so there is an intelligence in the body which works through the cerebellum, making these adjustments. The rhythm of the heart is kept up so that the flow of blood to every part of the body is regulated. The digestion of your food, the secretion of the glands, and a hundred and one other functions are kept going through the nerve centers in the cerebellum. An intelligence is working on our behalf. So, when you run, the intelligence is working on your behalf. When you relax, the intelligence is working on your behalf. Whatever you do, the intelligence is working on your behalf. If you violate your body, if you break it up, if you hit your head against the wall, if you break your leg, intelligence begins to mend it. Intelligence, in fact, tells you not to worry. And when one is intelligent, they don't worry. That reminds me of the story of Cohen and Moses. They, one lived across the street <coughs> for the other. And Cohen, uh, Moses couldn't sleep this night. He was tossing in bed and tossing and tossing and all the rest of and Rachel said to him, what's wrong with you, Cohen? Can't you sleep? No, he said, I, I owe, I, I owe Moses, I owe Cohen, he said, I owe Cohen uh, 200 pounds and I can't pay it tomorrow. And the bill's due tomorrow. She says, I'll settle that. That? So she run at the window and she said, Cohen, Cohen, Moses can't pay you that 200 pounds tomorrow. She said, on and when you, now Cohen, go to sleep. Let Moses rather worry about it. <laughs> So that was intelligence. <laughs> Emotional stress causes misbehavior in the nerve centers interfering with these internal adjustments and create physical disorder among the organs of the body. Therefore, thought and emotion often cause 90% of our physical ailments. The brain is the organ through which your mental and emotional reactions take place. It works well when you are at peace with yourself and with your environment. I will instruct you, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Psalms that do hate. If we then realize the importance of these sayings that I have picked up for you to study, you will see how they fit in to this message. When we see then that it works well when you are at peace with yourself and your environment, it is no joke to live with a neurotic, but if you want peace at home, your job is to understand the condition that has to be cured. The condition that has to be eliminated. A, neur a neurotic is permitting the organs of the body to dictate to the cerebrum through the cerebellum. The body talks back to the brain. The body talks uh, to the cerebellum. The cerebellum tells the cerebrum what the body is feeling. Therefore, you become aware of that. Then, the cerebrum knows what it's feeling, and then it tells somebody else of what is felt. So consequently, the whole house is in an uproar. For the simple reason is that here we have the thinking part of the brain is suffocated. For when emotion rules, the body controls the mind. And when the whole brain and body works as one unit, the mind controls matter and reason prevails, so does peace. So, if your body rules your brain and mind, you are not at peace. But there is a way and means whereby you can get your body to that state of peace through a certain directive relaxations which you will have in future. These will give you 
the key. It will give you the keys whereby you can reduce those tensions, those emotions, and bring about that peace that is required, so that that which in itself is peaceful will take control and rise in your soul and body. We must realize that neurotic trouble is not imaginary. It is caused by sick nerves. And to cure sick nerves, the sufferer has to be dehypnotized. In dealing with the nervous system, we see that nerves outpicture our thoughts and emotions. So, if you say to a passion, it's only imagination, and leave it at that, you only intensify the trouble of the, the poor passion is suffering from, you do not understand. <clears throat> because they don't understand it themselves. And you don't understand it. But we will understand it. You will see the reason the why of this. Because you created it. You cannot see the why of anything God created, but you can see the why and how of everything you create in yourself. And because it is secondary, you're creating secondary causes which manifest in the form of either sickness or health. There is underlying the structure of the body and intelligence that almost tends to bring it into harmony with nature. When you take off the brakes, then God does the work. The vehicle, it is the vehicle through which our thoughts and emotions are expressed, and we produce the exact replica of our thoughts, the thoughts we hold. Thoughts held in the grip of emotion out picture almost instantaneous. So we see that the nervous system is the vehicle through which our thoughts and emotions are expressed and we produce the exact replica of the thoughts we hold. Thoughts held in the grip of emotion are picture almost instantaneous. Let us consider the mechanism called fear. <laughs> fear plays a part in the lives of most people. Abnormal fear is dynamic in its action, and a knowledge of how to eliminate it is of inestimable value. Animals act on instinct. Action follows perception. <clears throat> a sort of mechanical reaction takes place. Man's perception is not immediately transferred into action. There is an interval of choice between perception and action. This is when our emotion affects our Im imagination. Our imagination runs wild. It is in the interval between perception and reaction that fear enters and spontaneous suggestion takes effect, we are self-hypnotized. You see that? How it is, how it comes about, don't you? Self-hypnotized. Now, why are you self-hypnotized? Because through your self-hypnotization, the conscious reasoning part of the mind and brain is temporarily obliterated. This is just what our emotions do to us. They obliterate the reasoning part of your mind because you are de because you are hypnotized by yourself through your emotions. The ideas, the suggestions, the thoughts that pass through your mind during a state of emotion is not reasoned with. They are not known to the consciousness. They flash through your mind unnoticed. 
They take hold of your brain, your nervous system, and begin to outpicture exactly what you thought, yet you did not know what you thought. But at the same time, it is outpicturing in your body. You have hypnotized yourself through your emotions by the ideas that happen to pass into your mind during that state of emotion of which you are not aware of. <coughs> a passion will strike a blow in anger. Even sometimes they will touch, strike one that they love. They are hypnotized to their emotion. They are not responsible for what they are doing. It is the same, you are doing the same in a minor way every day of your life. If you will remember that, it will bring to your mind what you are doing. And you will reason. And by whenever reason enters into your mind, then your emotion will die down and you will understand. Ideas are set up in the mind unconsciously when fear rules and are transferred to the brain and nervous system for immediate action. We have not brought our conscious reasoning into action, and a great deal of our mental makeup is the result of these spontaneous suggestions of which we are not aware. And you are suffering from all these spontaneous suggestions that are still existing in your mind, and are preventing you from sleeping, they are preventing you from eating, they are preventing you from walking, they are preventing you from talking. They cause all these inhibitions that you have in yourselves. Hypnotized by yourselves, you are the victim of your own emotions and thoughts. <coughs> these, then, we see, create an activity in our nervous system. The nervous system is the first to be affected. There is disturbance set up, and the cells of the body are eventually affected. Do you ever think how dynamic are your emotional habit patterns? How they demand expression? They are now, at this moment, sending streams of suggestion to your brain, urging you into some activity. Consider the habit of smoking. It may be trivial in the scheme of things in your life. Nevertheless, examine this habit and see what power it has over you. It is continually, these habit patterns are continually sending streams of suggestion to your brain and mind for activity, for action. <laughs> You are all suffering from these things because you do not know. But when you have finished this course, those class, if you do not know about them, well, I will say you are downright ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> and the way to understand them is to understand yourselves. Immediately you begin to understand yourselves you will find that these emotional habit patterns begin to die away through relaxation and divine reason. You reach a stage where that in itself, that is perfect in itself, begins to take its place. When you discern all the things that hinder your true expression, then they will dissolve away. Thoughts become active in the body through chemicalization. In this way, thoughts change the tissue structure. Thought is spiritual energy and is carried into operation through the mind, brain, and nervous system. Under emotional habit patterns, wave after wave of suggestion is sent to the cerebellum. From there, forwarded to the center of 
uh, center of in inhibition or stimulation in the cerebrum. Nervous impulses are sent from one center to another, creating inhibition and stimulation, and the result is partial hypnosis is created. If you can only realize this, that these habit patterns being established in your cells by your cells are continually sending nerve impulses outwardly so that these habit patterns can be expressed. If you do not know that this habit pattern is your own, sometimes you think it's somebody else. It's mostly you try to make it believe that, make, make yourself believe that somebody else is the cause. That there is no one caused but yourself. No. And if you will realize this, and you will see what's happening, you will begin to deserve <coughs> and understand. And when you understand yourself, then you will begin to express your true self and not the habit. While the rest of the family may resent the unreasonable demands of the neurotic, the poor neurotic sufferer is confused and muddled up, and is the tragic victim of his or her own emotional conflicts, and is terrified by the physical sensations produced by them. Neurotic Neurotics sink into despair when told that their troubles are imaginary. They're caught up in the hypnotic state of their own thoughts and feelings. What they need is an explanation of their troubles and with directions to follow that will take them out of the maze into which they have wandered. And this is not so difficult by any means. Rectification takes place gradually and surely until sound reason prevails once more. And relaxation and divine reasoning is the key. The technique will be detailed in future lessons. In the meantime, let us understand, first of all, the causes of these problems. <coughs> And we will see what we are doing to ourselves. If then the whole family may resent the unreasonable demands of a neurotic, the poor neurotic sufferer is just suffering more and more because the sufferer sees not only what is happening to it to herself or himself, but he or she sees what she's doing, he or she is doing to the family. And the sooner that individual begins to discern the causes of the trouble, so that some directive scheme, some directive uh, instructions will be given to follow up, and he will get them. I can't give you everything in five minutes. I know you're all wanting it now. You're all wanting it just a mouth of open and wanting to get it. But, if I give it to you now, you would not thoroughly understand because you have not understood the basic principles fine. When you understand the basic principles, then you will readily put into those simple practices that I shall give you. You will be keen to do it. You will be anxious to do it for the simple reason that you will know what you are doing. What I intend to do in the next series is to take you through a series of directive relaxation exercises coupled with divine reasoning each week. Taking ten weeks to complete the course. I will not ask you to believe anything, only to follow my instructions. And you will find that self-dehypnotizing comes as a natural sequence to this scientific application of a master technique 
that has healed thousands of all kinds of ailments, all kinds of people with all kinds of ailments. And I am not exaggerating one I thought of. Wisdom is everywhere and is man's true nature. It is the action of wisdom that makes us whole, whole in every respect. You do not get wisdom through the senses, but through relaxation and divine reason. While the emotional patterns are being dissolved and broken up by self-control and self-mastery, self-control and self-mastery takes place. The real is always there. We cover it up with error. When the error is dissolved, the real is revealed. So, while the emotional habit patterns are being dissolved and broken up, self-control and self-mastery takes place. It's natural. Because the real is always there. And if you will realize this great truth, you cover it up with error. It is smothered. It is no longer free. And therefore you put yourselves in a cage with it. <coughs> when the error is dissolved, the real is revealed. We become channels through which the infinite self ex expresses himself. The infinite self expresses himself. Because there can be no other expression in true expression. When you then eliminate all these inhibitions, <laughs> these stimulations that cause the very opposite of what we call inhibition, I may have a person who is paralyzed. That's an inhibition. I may have a person who has what we call St. Vitus dance. <laughs> and that is stimulation. Both come from the same source. They're created in the individual by the individual. These are habit patterns. Which are the result of a misbehavior in the cerebellum being outpictured on the body caused by emotional stresses and strains by often occupational anxieties by worries and by all these things that bring these things about. The Bible is a wonderful book because it instructs us how to become peaceful. It instructs us even if we are in trouble and in trial. It shows us how the mind can be calm and peaceful. It shows also that where a person is successful in life, that success must not go to the brain or the mind. It must be leveled and controlled through realization of the truth. It also shows us this, that kindness and love is the secret of happiness. And it is, it is not always taking, 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 that is, that gives one happiness, but giving, giving. And when we begin to realize this, that we become channels through which the infinite self expresses himself. How wonderful is the truth that in the silence obtained through scientific relaxation and divine reasoning, error is dissolved away in the quietness of that peace that passes all understanding. The infinite intelligence moves silently into action. I myself am nothing, 
the spirit of the Father within me doeth all good. Know you not that I am the Father and the Father within me? The Father, whoever remaineth within me, is the Father who will be. When we become consciously cooperative and aware of our true nature, this then shall be the starting point of every thought. We will then act in accordance with the wisdom of the Almighty, bringing into our lives perfect happiness, perfect health and abundance. This is no idle dream. It is an established fact, and there are thousands living today who have proved it. It is under these conditions that we come into our divine inheritance of health, harmony, and abundance. But first of all, we must give up our limitation, our weaknesses, our enslavement, our self-pity. Just Think for a moment what that means. And there is no one that imposes any limitation upon us. No one imposes any weakness upon us. No one imposes any enslavement on us but ourselves. And when we have covered ourselves up with these, we then seek self-pity. We don't want the other person to pity us in our distressing, stupid condition that we ourselves put ourselves in. The time will come, and I hope soon, when we will be ashamed to talk about our weaknesses. We'll be ashamed to talk about our limitations. We'll be ashamed to talk about our own enslavement because it will show our true ignorance. Our divine nature to our divine nature we must hold on no matter what is taking place outside. No matter what conditions we are created through error in thought and action, we will know them for what they are, and while they are disappearing into nothingness from which they arose, we'll be thankful for the experiences we gain through them. And when you are passed through them, you will have experience. But your experiences must not hinder you. Most people are hindering themselves by their own experiences. If you think that these experiences are giving you a sense of notoriety, that you have an operation for this, and you Open and you show your scar, whatever it may be. <coughs> <coughs> Don't you see then that what you are doing, you're hindering yourself by your experience. Most people like to show the scars, whatever they may be. And, in fact, absolutely relishing in the fact that they've had an operation for this and an operation for that. One woman told me the other day that she had 18 operations and she was so glad about it. I said, aren't you damn well ashamed of yourself? <laughs> I'm 
can go on having more and more operations if we can only realize the great importance of the fact that life itself <coughs> is unconditioned. It imposes no condition upon itself because it can't. It is free and natural. Life is not affected because you have had an operation. Life is not affected because you have had a duodenal ulcer through your emotional habit patterns created by yourselves. Life is not affected because you can't sleep. Life is not affected because you can't drink or you can't eat. Life is not affected in any way whatsoever. It is still unconditioned. and will still remain unconditioned. It's like electricity. There, we put a globe in there, and we condition light. electricity, we make it light. We've conditioned that electricity there, but does it interfere with the electricity? Has it sparked the electricity? Has it sparked the electricity because we have a heater? Has it destroyed the electricity because we use it for x-ray? Does it destroy electricity because some person catches a wire and kills himself? Does electricity affect it because all these conditions are imposed upon it? <coughs> Neither is the life affected in you when you impose conditions upon it through your thoughts and emotions. If you will recognize this truth then, you will free yourselves. You will become channels through which the infinite self expresses himself. And how wonderful is this truth that in the silence <clears throat> obtained through scientific relaxation and divine reasoning, error is dissolved away In the quietness of that peace that passes all understanding, the infinite intelligence moves silently into action. But we must become consciously cooperative. and aware of our true nature. Then that shall be the starting point for every thought, every action. In that way, our thoughts and actions will become purer and purer and purer. And we will act in accordance then with the wisdom of God. His son Jesus as an example to us. Bringing into our lives happiness not only into our own lives but into everyone that surrounds us. And this is not a dream at all. It's a natural actuality. It becomes yours. If one can do it, all can do it. In that recognition then, we will find that when God made the universe, he must have had a plan. And to the earnest seeker, it is in the heart of man. Not one man only, 
but the whole of mankind. And when in relaxation with divine reason, God's plan, you are sure of the sun. Benediction. Oh, beloved father, mother, divine parent, I am thy spirit, flesh, and blood. While thou behold me through the twinkling stars, thou art present in my heart. While thou watch me through the sun and moon, my soul and body are thine. While thou caress me through the sun and rain, thou lovest me through my love. While thy immortality throbs in my heart, my immortal frame gives expression to thy voice. While thou help others through my hands, let them realize it is thy touch, not mine. While thou inspire others through my mind, make them feel thy breath in them. While I sing for joy in thy presence, Complete my eternal song in the realization of thy presence in me. O oh, dearest 